Hello, everybody. Welcome to Webinar Wednesday. My name is Martin Loffers. I'm uh, the editor in chief of Supply Chain Movement. I'm also the chief tenant of Supply Chain Media. Um, and you might also know me as uh, the architect of the IT uh, Supply Map Europe. So, uh, welcome to this uh, live uh, webinar. Um, so, we have a, well, I think a, a groundbreaking uh, uh, turn up. You know, more than 1,200 people have re registered already. So uh, we expect a lot of people and, you know, ChatGPT is hot and that, that shows. Um, so um, with me, I have uh, two experts. So let me show to myself to the left. That's me. But next, I'm, I'm waiting for uh, Pete Bauke to enter again. But um, yeah, he just left. I don't know where it is, but I think uh, he should uh, get back on. Um, but he will uh, join me. Uh, well, uh, I think uh, right now. But uh, next to me, uh, I have also Tien Kok. Uh, she's uh, director IBP at uh, GDE, um, uh, Jacob Zouwe Egberts. And uh, she also has a history uh, at the known and Accenture. So, hi, Tineke. Hi, Martijn. Thank you for inviting uh, me. Yes, yes, we have a great webinar, but still, you know, I'm, I'm a bit worried about Pete because um, he has to uh, leave backstage. So, but then again, um, I, first some, some things about uh, this, uh, this uh, webinar. Um, this uh, webinar uh, will be recorded and uh, the PDF will be made available afterwards. And um, the, the whole audience is on mute, uh, but you can interact. You, you can see, you know, you can use the chat function. Uh, unfortunately, there's no chat TPT in AirMeet, so uh, that's one thing. But um, uh, you can ask questions, and please, if you ask questions to, to, to Tineke, Pete, and myself, please use the Q&A uh, functionality on the right-hand side. So you see uh, the text cloud, uh, and, um, 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 you know, I will track these uh, questions popping up. And if these questions are in line of uh, the conversations that I will be having, I will ask these questions immediately. So um, that's that's basically how it works. Um, and now, after five o'clock, you know, I can imagine you have still a lot of more questions. So um, uh, this this uh, um, is also uh, an opportunity to uh, go directly to uh, Tineke, uh, Pete, and myself. So after five o'clock CET, we'll be in the lounge, in the virtual lounge. So you see, it looks like this. So we'll be sitting at uh, the, 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 the virtual tables and then a Zoom meeting is popping up. So um, this is how it works uh, after five o'clock. So I'm still waiting for Pete to join because he was joining us beforehand, but now I have to check where he is right now. Um, just, so let me check where it is. Um, but maybe, you know, uh, we'll, we'll get there and we will now put off our camera, uh, basically, you know, uh, for the reason that you can enlarge your screen. So, and on the, on the right hand side, uh, on the upper left, upper right corner, you can enlarge your screen and you have a better view on your uh, screen. All right. So, but first, uh, Tineke, maybe you can explain a bit more about Jacob Zou Egberts. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Martijn. Uh, Jacobs Douwe Egberts, uh, for those of you that uh, either uh, live in the Netherlands or Germany, know the names of Jacobs and Douwe Egberts. So they're quite old uh, names in the coffee business, but the company uh, originated six years ago with the joint and the joining of the two companies of Jacobs and Douwe Egberts. So uh, Douwe Egberts originated uh, 15, uh, 53 in Jauren, so from, you know, with Dutch heritage. And Jacobs came from, uh, from Bremen, from, uh, from Germany. Uh, so quite an old name in the coffee business, but a young company uh, in origin uh, that it only existed in this shape uh, for a couple of years. And All right. Some uh, statistics maybe on uh, the size of the company. Yeah. So one of the statistics on uh, how globally uh, we are uh, present around the world. So we are uh, present in uh, 43 markets uh, globally. And one of the nice statistics that uh, I find is that uh, every second, 4,500 4, cups of our coffee and tea are uh, served every uh, around the globe. 
Um, yes, okay. can you uh, tell me a bit more about uh, the supply chain planning organization? So what's your role and how do you plan at uh, Jacobs Al Egberts? Yeah, so uh, indeed I'm responsible for global IBP and in these uh, 43 markets uh, that we have there locally, uh, the demand forecast is made. So from uh, marketing and sales teams uh, led by supply chain, we make a forecast for uh, next week next month, next year, uh, which is being consolidated then uh, either in Europe for European factories or locally uh, to uh, turn that into uh, inventory and production uh, plans for the, the coming periods. And then uh, all the factories are, uh, are making their volumes out of it and distributing that uh, around the world. So we have some local and some central uh, uh, productions. So that is also giving them a nice challenge that that demand is then to be allocated uh, uh, all around these markets. So uh, we follow a quite rigid drumbeat on uh, on demand forecasting in weekly and monthly buckets to get then uh, both the commercial and uh, and the supply plans together. All right. All right. So, so how many people do you have in planning uh, in the Netherlands and across Europe? Can you explain? Ooh. Uh, well, around the globe, there are uh, in the market somewhere around 200 people involved in uh, in making the commercial uh, volumes. And then centrally, uh, I, I can't guess. So it's uh, it, much less. But, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, we still have a, a, a tiny issue with Pete, you know, uh, uh, getting on stage. So <laughs> that's, that's, I'm trying to get him on stage. Um, so, but before, you know, we were working on that. Hopefully he will join uh, in a second. So, you know, the thing is, um, we talk about ChatGPT in, the, in this, this, uh, this broadcast. So um, basically what you see right here, so there is an is a organization, IO2 Analytics, and basically what they're tracking down every uh, quarter is what are CEOs uh, talking about in their earnings call. And so they have tracked down 3,000 listed companies in the U.S. And, you know, and they gather all kind of uh, data. What are they talking about? And they use uh, word clouds. And basically what you see here is what they have been uh, discussing in Q4 of last year. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, above the line, that's the growth in the index of uh, uh, what's in growing importance. And um, to the right is, is, is also... Uh, in, in big and fading uh, importance. So you see that the, the things are changing. Um, so what, what we see right now, you know, um, if you are look at the upper side, reshoring is, is hot and going to the right, labor market is uh, also very hot and interest rates, that was a, a common topic. And also energy and inflation was uh, on top of uh, um, uh, the calls. So. But now, uh, as of last quarter, Q1, uh, 2023, um, uh, ChatGPT uh, upper part is, is is booming up. So that's uh, something, and you know, uh, everybody, all the CEOs uh, are, are talking about it. And another thing is AI to the right. You see, is is very hot, and of course, uh, economic uncertainty uh, is uh, is popping up. So you know, the, the world is uh, is changing, and uh, that that's popping up. Um, so that's basically what CEOs are talking about in the earnings calls and um, what we see, you know, uh, it will translate uh, probably in your world, Tineke. So can you explain how, how uh, all these things are happening in your world? Yeah, a lot of these terms that these CEOs are talking about are actually supply chain planning topics. Uh, so if we need to talk about all the uncertainties and inflations uh, that you have and all the data and AI that you can maybe use to uh, to address that, that's exactly the uh, the dynamic that uh, that we see as well in uh, in JDE. So uh, the the future will not be as the past is. Uh, so just understanding what uh, what the past was and then prognosing out of that for the, for the future doesn't work. So we're quite uh, a company that is uh, driven by a difference of, uh, of price, different in, uh, in promotions, uh, assortments, etc. So all these elements uh, have quite a, an impact on supply chain planning. Okay. And so I uh, know moving from left to right, so you so, uh, to the left, you see the external drivers. We you know them, COVID, uh, energy, inflation. Um, in the middle, you, you see all, all the things in supply chain, I would say. And, and an important point is your knowledge workers as a central uh, piece of your organization. And to the right, you see uh, the world uh, changing. So can you explain uh, how you cope with that? And, and then moving to Garvis at the... Uh, 
the uh, lower uh, part of the the, uh, the slide. So what? Uh, how do you address it, and how do you use Garvis as as a tool? Yeah, yeah. As a demand planner, it's indeed yeah, the, the the challenge to to make a number out of all these drivers, right? Mm -hmm. So what is happening with all the difference in uh, during COVID on channel changes that we saw? So people were staying at home, so you were consuming your coffee in uh, in a different way than what you did. So energy prices indeed are uh, changing for people at home on how they consume and uh, uh, the, the inflation, how it's impacting their spending power. Then uh, indeed internally also these uh, the stock situations, uh, the uh, what we have uh, in our internal supply chains. But then we need to translate that into prognosis. Mm -hmm. So how are we translating that into a demand plan for yeah, the, the, the short as well as for the long term? And then uh, yeah, the demand planners, I see them as the conscience of the organization. You know, everybody has an idea on where the world is uh, evolving to. So sales team has, marketing teams, uh, financial teams. But then uh, the supply chain team need to make sure that uh, we do it on the good service uh, and right inventory level. So bringing all those data together is, uh, yeah, is quite a challenge. And yeah, that's also how we came to Garvey. So with the, the planning tools that we had, we couldn't explain uh, all these different drivers and understand what the impact is of the volume, both in the past as well as on the future. And now that uh, we have these technologies in hand, so without being a data scientist, but with the help of, uh, of Garvis, we you know, can make sense of what happened in the past and also then to make the prognosis for the future in case uh, yeah, these things will happen again. And, and, and basically, so you are rolling out Garvis in, in, in several countries in Europe, I understand? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, both for what we call the retail markets, so uh, uh, the, the the supermarkets around the corner, the e-commerce channels, as also uh, the out-of-home channels, so the coffee you drink, both at the office and uh, and in bars and restaurants. Yeah. 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 You see the Amazon customer. You know they they have a, a very high needs and high demand. So and you want to serve them in the right way. So uh, we get that. Um, uh, Pete, uh, uh, welcome uh, to to do this uh, live uh, webinar. Yes. Uh, yes. I was short, lost uh, in space. <laughs> yeah, you lost in space. Sorry, but we found you. Um, yeah, so yeah, there's, no, there's no chat TPT how to get you uh, back on stage yeah, yeah. without a glitch. So, but you are here. But um, Pete, you know, uh, working for Garvis, you know, you you have a, a technology uh, background, but you, you have created Garvis as a co-founder with your team in the last uh, several years. Um, uh, so, so that's uh, rapidly uh, developing uh, a new software tool. But now you have found out that uh, JetDPT can also enhance your system. But maybe you could get back first. Uh, can you explain a bit more about how JetDPT works? Yes, absolutely. With pleasure. And, uh, and um, hello, everybody. Um, so um, JetDPT, I think, is really going to be the iPhone moment of um, uh, supply chain um, because basically you become the interface. And let me explain. Um, a little bit uh, how that works. And you see on the left um, a couple of symbols. You could call them like um, words, or um, but they could as well have been graphs, or they could have been pixels of a picture. But the importance is that they're structured um, symbols and that they are related to one another. And they are recognized in a context um, which is called large language models. And basically, what um, ChatGPT um, is about is um, a set of symbols that have a certain relationship used as an input to get a related structured output of symbols that have a certain um, that could be interpreted as meaning for us this is content for the environment or the ai these are just a range um, of symbols and uh, the, the the complexity lies in the world related so we go from related symbols to related symbols so it can be very simple to give an idea of related it can be um, for words like the tiger is dead eh? and then um, give them in another um, sequence eh? so then is the tiger dead eh? but for us it means a question but in this environment it just means like a very simple conversion but there is another um, difficult work the, the, what you say uh, so first was large language models eh, that can understand um, combination of symbols as language um, the what we call the generative and um, adversarial um, models and eh, what have they been able to do they have been able to go through all the content that exists in the world and to summarize it 
into um, hubs of knowledge, you could call them, which have um, what we call an attention head. So it means that they're identified kind of tag. And so now the beauty of ChatGPT is that it's able to take a couple of related symbols and compare them, compare them with uh, that content. I, I took a very simple example. Eh? The tiger is dead. Eh? And then uh, it means a tiger. Eh? So you, want the, 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 you can look in some content about um, it's a mammal. Of course, it's mortal. And um, mortal means that it's um, sad when it dies. Eh? So the, it's kind of deterministic eh, that um, you can, can create as a related answer a combination of symbols that says this is a sad event. But if you put it in a little bit more comp complexity, then um, you have an environment where um, you have different options. Eh? Not only um, now, what if the tiger didn't die in the zoo, but he was a man eater and um, he was shot? Then it's a total other emotion. That means that um, you could be happy, uh, or when he died in nature, that would mean because it's, it's, it's a tiger, it's a mammal that's clear near to extinct extinction. So. Um, all of a sudden you get uh, an image that there is a lot of content and that's uh, summarized. That's a capability of these uh, uh, generative uh, networks. But there is a supervision necessary um, to make a selection of what's the right answer. So the, the ChatGPT is going to go into a di dialogue with you to try to understand what the context is. Eh? So and then we come or can see if we see in the real um, discussion that we had uh, with the environment and the tiger is dead. Uh, I'm sorry to hear, but could you give me some um, some context? Um, and the first answer is the tiger is dead. I see the death of the tiger in the Antwerp Zoo, for instance, is sad news. But um, while it's unfortunate that the tiger had to be killed, eh, on the other hand, you have so the, the system is going to look um, for context. The important thing, however, to um, remember about this is that um, using these uh, GANs of generative um, adversarial networks, we were able to look at all content that exists um, in the world and make them accessible for a user interface, which is um, uh, human, basically um, a language. So now if we move to supply chain, which is the topic um, of today. Maybe before we get to the supply chain. So, you know, ChatGPT is based on a content uh, uh, open AI. The developer of ChatGPT uh, has, uh, um, you know, uh, uploaded from the, the publicly available internet of 2021. So that it's not, that is a limited, although it's, it's huge, a limited amount of data. Uh, so it's kind of a Wikipedia kind of environment of data. Uh, so that, that's how people are knowing ChatGPT in the last months i would say and uh, tried it or whatever but now we get in the supply chain and we get in a different environment maybe that's good to explain and then you can explain how this works in supply chain yes so um if we um uh, go now to supply chain you have again on the left um, the this um, structured relation between symbols which is a question which is basically your 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 uh, your interface in the environment of a large language model. So these symbols are understood. But Garvis um, does now as an, an um, artificial intelligence that's able to translate um, the last piece of the supply chain that was still analog, basically is the demand plan. Why a peak uh, in the demand um, has the number it has. So by making that relationship between the peak in the demand a number and the reason uh, uh, for it into um, language and translate that into uh, and summarize it with an attention head so that it can be recognized. Now, all of a sudden, what you're able to do is um, use um, human language and um, use the large language model capabilities to connect to um, an understanding of your supply chain environment in a language environment. And then you can enrich it with um, other information around it, um, like uh, what does growth mean, what does um, percentages mean. And so your, your question um, connected to your contents can lead to the answer, the growth is uh, 
promotion driven. So, but let me explain a little bit um, how that works. Or maybe um, Tineke, um, you're using it, so maybe you can explain a bit how that works. All right. Yep. Yeah. So indeed, yeah. Yep. Based on all the volumes and the, the shifts and swings that you see in uh, in your past and in your future forecast, that is that's driven by an event. So. Uh, Either what, there was a promo or you launched or discontinued the product or you entered a new channel or the competition did something. So all these different data elements that the demand planner then feeds into your planning tool are explaining the, the peaks and valleys of, uh, of your volumes. So getting then yeah, a, a, a tool like ChatTTP on top of that, the, that can really help you get that insights into a much easier way out of the system than uh, through classical navigation on uh, explaining these volumes. Yeah, but if I look at this graph, so, so the, the important thing for, to me, okay, you have your, uh, your data, new markets, promotion, new products, and still the planner is uh, in the middle as the, the the conscience of your supply chain planning environment to make sense of it all but now supported with a tool like garvis absolutely yeah, yeah. so volumes uh, sales happen for a reason or no yeah. sales happen for a reason so explaining why you didn't sell or you did sell to really understand the drivers behind that's where yeah garvis is helping us to make that explanation and then, uh, getting indeed a, a chat gpt type of, uh, of interface uh, to get that information out can not only make it uh, then accessible for the planner that knows the, the, the structure of the data that can uh, that is driving these uh, these inputs and outputs we can also use that other uh, people in in your organization can help to explain uh, these drivers of the volumes. Uh, the important thing, the important thing is, uh, is, is, you know, in my opinion, that um, computers are good in, in you know, uh, analyzing correlation, but, but, but for causality, uh, you know, cause and effect, you still need humans to, 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 to think and to, uh, to determine if this is a cause or an effect. Absolutely. And just throwing data at uh, at your volumes, then, then that doesn't make a lot of sense. So what we also saw in the, is that sometimes less is more. So really understanding what is behind and seeing that these kind of events happen more frequent with the same uh, impact of the, the promotion that you did, the price change that you did on what happened at the customer side, then you really come to, uh, to the driver. So causal AI, I think that's uh, still uh, a next step. Okay, yeah. and Pete, maybe you can explain a bit more. Yes, uh, uh, what I hear is very important. Eh? On, on top of that, you, you, you cannot have data from everything. Eh? So because you're trying to forecast for the whole world, it's, it's um, events um, can happen that can be seen by humans and can be synthesized um, a lot faster than when you um, would have to have all data from everything to, uh, to have the pure AI so models work on it. So it's a combination of human input with, um, of course, the way your customers react, these peaks and trough, but also how effective certain measures are, like going to new markets, promoting um, your environment or launching uh, new products. So, but the important thing is that all that information can be digitized then. And um, because, and the digitization of the insights are going to be the basis um, of what later your um, large language models can work with. Eh? So maybe you can describe how the market is developing and how you respond to these uh, developments. Yes, eh? so um, so like Tineke described, eh? as events unfold in the world, eh? whether this can be events like um, for a drink business when you have uh, tournaments or um, for the medical business if you have an, um, like uh, it's an event like Corona, or your customers like or dislike your product um, buying in supermarkets or in certain channels, um, you get competition or not. All these events drive these peaks and trough. And to get the planner together with the AI will translate it into your components of your demand. What is your baseline? Whatever you do, what happens? What's driven by seasonality? Uh, think of uh, uh, barbecue in summer and in, and in winter. Is your product growing? Is it decreasing? Uh, what's the impact of promotion? What's the impact of new products? All these elements together, if you can describe them, um, first of all, what number you expect for them, but also in what range this number is going to happen. If you forecast 100 and it will be 80 or 120, is a lot different than when it will be six, between 60 and 140. But also the risk, is it, I'm going to under forecast or over forecast. If you can digitize that all, 
um, you can translate it into language and then you can inter interrogate it with um, a chat GPT or your um, uh, normal language uh, environment. So, yeah, and then we get to the final stage and maybe that's the most important part of, uh, you know, yes. how you can use chat GPT. Absolutely. Yeah. So if we, what we talked about, um, Tilke and myself is about the lift part. Eh? We have built, uh, created the relationship between the ups and downs of the demand and the components that drove them. Then, of course, we can connect it in our supply chain with uh, KPIs like inventory terms or ups of our minimum or maximum um, information. But the great uh, potential lies, of course, if you can bring in then external information. And now your, your question gets answered not only about what drives the growth, but not only the growth is driven by promotion, but it can also give you external information like you're losing market share, which then, of course, puts it in a total uh, other perspective. And that's the great change um, I see uh, happening. Yeah. You know, um, and, you know, when we had uh, this uh, uh, briefing for this webinar, you know, I think, you know, ChatGPT, you know, it's kind of Wikipedia kind of environment, but then you explain it. Now we have integrated ChatGPT in, into Garvis. So then think, oh, that's great. So it's not the, the, the you know, the internet data of 2021, uh, but it's inside ChatGPT to, to use it. So, so now we can uh, watch how it works uh, within uh, ChatGPT. And uh, maybe, uh, Tineke, maybe you can, can have some comments about it, you know, what you've been seeing and how it's been used. So now we are looking at ChatGPT inside of Garvis. Yeah, so indeed you can ask then instead of navigating through yeah, your master data, your filters and uh, to find the uh, information uh, that you might not be looking for, you can ask indeed a question to, uh, to Garvis. So you can use just language, uh, type a question, and then uh, the information will uh, display uh, as uh, as you type along so and if you want them to know a bit a bit more you can slice for instance on uh, the kind of information you want to see about these brands how the how the coffee market is evolving what is uh, the contribution of promo seasonality it's all part of uh, the garvis model in yeah as a planner maybe you know how to navigate how to see it but if you have a really specific question it's one faster to get the, the information out. And also it's much more intuitive to, uh, to ask the question this way and uh, to see it. Basically, these are the questions or the, the, the management would like to be answered, you know, in a PowerPoint presentation when you have this uh, SNOP meetings. Absolutely, yeah. And wouldn't it be great if uh, indeed your VP or if your GM is just uh, typing your questions into your planning tool to uh, to find the answer that they're looking for? So how many yeah. times indeed are we spending in PowerPointing to get uh, the slices and dices uh, that people want to see uh, with an explanation to it uh, into a PowerPoint slide? And uh, with these kind of technologies, you don't need to do it because yeah, they, they can just ask the question uh, to the system. And I every number always also uh, triggers a new question. So yeah. then as a planner, you always continue to, to slice and dice further on uh, to answer that question. But now you can uh, can do it with uh, with your own questions. I can imagine, you know, you, you, get, you know, uh, are drowning in data and you can uh, be distracted by where you are. And uh, isn't this a way of that you know that you're on the right uh, uh, point and that you know that, you know, lost in the maze? Could be, yeah, but then it's a bit the same as, uh, yeah, uh, you also don't click through and through and then you find up, uh, you end uh, up somewhere saying, well, what was I looking for again? I think yeah. it can also help you to really come to the uh, to the question that you really want to get answered and go to, the, to that answer much faster. So yes, obviously you, you can have a nice conversation with them and you can end up uh, chatting over your forecast uh, with a cup of coffee in your hand and have a nice, uh, <laughs> you dr drift off where maybe Maybe you don't want to go. On the other hand, it can also, if you ask the right question, and if you uh, get to the question, it can uh, help also a great deal. So, so uh, uh, Pete, how do you, how do you came to the idea to use it in this way, and how how long did it take to to uh, to integrate it in the garden? Yeah, of course. So the, the the idea came around January, of course, eh, because ChatGPT was only released. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at, at that time. But um, I remember going to um, a, a customer and, and of course we're very proud about Garvey's product that we can capture those insights. But we never found like a real way on how the, to really make it different. And then somebody asked me, 
um, yeah, if you really wanted to sell your product you know, to the big organizations, you need a lot more graphics, you know, and I thought graphics, 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 because, and then why not use ChatGPT, you know, and um, because then you're not fixed in graphics, but you can basically ask anything that you want. And that's how the idea came, you know, basically. Yeah. And then and I, yeah. I got a question from the audience, you know, um, and maybe that's, that's this disconnect of what ChatGPT is. Uh, GPT has limitations in picking up very recent events. How can you pick up the recent uh, newly emerging demand drivers in the market? Yes. So w what we did, and that's very important. Eh? So everybody has an idea of ChatGPT uh, on the uh, 2021 content. Eh? You, so mm, yeah. um, and these capabilities. This is very very specific. This is also not public data. Eh? There's no mm. way you want your data from your company given to ChatGPT. This is very specific data that we have translated all the information that's very current. That's like at the moment your planner sees something and creates the insight, it's translated into language that can be read by a large language model. And it's generated as heaps of or, or summarized as chunks of information that can be composed using the capabilities of uh, a language model uh, into these uh, components that you see right now. And, and Tineke, you know, uh, a lot of uh, CPG uh, companies are using uh, data from Nielsen. Is it also still valid? Can you use it? Or how do I uh, have to take that? Yeah, currently, we're not using it. So indeed, it's, uh, it's outdated uh, when you really want to make it into a forecast. Yeah, and if it's in the past, you also need to forecast it for the future, right? So yeah. Yeah, the, the key drivers, obviously, uh, you want to forecast. But uh, at the moment, uh, currently, uh, we're not using it. And Pete, is it, you know, can you get more uh, demand census uh, the kind of data into this uh, model and to, into this application? Yes, so it's just a start. Eh? We are um, like we going to evolve um, to data ecosystems. Eh? So that means that um, in your environment, you will have your system connected to a data that makes sense in the Nielsen of the future um, or maybe us for the future will create data that's useful and that's updated uh, for the environment you're working in. And, uh, we're just making the first steps here, but it's, it's going to be the, the thing that you have to imagine is that all information is going to be accessible. Right? So it needs to be curated, but it's going to be accessible. And supply chain is, is a very good area because um, when we talked about it, uh, there is um, First of all, you have a lot of silos and eh? you have mm -hmm. uh, demand, you have distribution in these silos. There is a lot of specialists eh? people are very specialized and have their own KPIs. So it's very difficult for them to know what somebody else thinks and um, um, to understand um, what drives that person. And so you have to bring them together um, by training them, people, by bringing them in a process eh? because people think about the SNOP process. And then uh, you have to use technology. So people need to be trained. So it's very complex to do that. And you have to make all these decisions on a very short period of time as the world is changing. And you have to do that for the short term, medium and long term. And any decision that you make as a demand plan and also as production has an impact on uh, your revenue, your cost or your working capital. So so um, maybe it might make sense eh, to, to look a little bit how it goes now eh, to, to see how um, by 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 removing those frontiers and giving everybody the knowledge of everybody um how that could help uh. yeah and the important thing is uh, apart from uh, the three boxes in the middle revenue working capital and costs then you have services also in there but um to the right you have your long time uh, long term medium and uh, short term uh so that's that you know that's quite complex but in, in this environment, uh, uh, talking about it, that, that makes it more easy. But, but the whole point, what we see in the last decades, you know, we have developed all kind of SNOP processes. Maybe uh, Tineke, maybe you can explain, you've been here in this uh, environment in SNOP for quite some time. Maybe yeah. you can re reflect uh, how, how does this relate to the SNOP processes? Yeah, 
So what we have done in the past, indeed, uh, since I think the 80s, was understand the history, uh, then make a calculation out of that on uh, what the baseline is, what the, what the future holds, what kind of assumptions do we have uh, getting everybody around the table in order then to uh, come up with a demand consensus and a signed off volume. That yeah, takes a month to get then your, your monthly drumbeat around. So there's a latency on that. So the moment that you close your cycle, then the world has changed already. So it's quite slow in getting all these assumptions aligned, get, getting everybody uh, to the same page on uh, on your volumes. And what I see happening now with uh, these kind of new technologies is that it's becoming much more integrated and much faster. So questions that you might have yeah, took maybe uh, longer to uh, to get an answer to. And now with you know, the, the, the kind of uh, insights you might get from uh, technologies like ChatGPT, you can ask your questions, you have the insight, you can take the decision, you can move on in a much faster pace than uh, the, the old fashioned SNOP uh, cycle. So, so basically, it, and we, we see it here, you know, um, to the left is kind of all of a wide kind of a uh, uh, process cycle, a decision making cycle with you have your portfolio analysis and your demand uh, uh, plan, supply plan and your consolidation. So that's on yeah. the left. So how, how does it evolve? So you've been through this cycle uh, in, 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 in your current job and previous job. So. Uh, yeah. So and everybody of, yeah, comes indeed to the table with in the portfolio meeting, in the in the sales meeting, in the demand consensus with their assumptions on uh, what kind of volume impact do my activities have. And you try to stack them all up on top of each other to then come to your volume at the end. And then you say, oh, I don't like it. We tweak it. And then you have uh, your end result. But what now happens is that it becomes much more assumption based, much more driver based. So everybody has their ideas on what they're going to do, but you don't do it in a silo. So when you introduce a new product, it's also included in your portfolio, in your promotions. When you do a promotion in a seasonal, high seasonal period or low seasonal period, it has a very different implication. So getting all the different drivers together into an integrated volume forecast is really yeah, a shift in, in how you approach the, uh, the IBP cycle. So, so to the left, m m most companies, uh, you know, they have developed uh, uh, a four-week uh, cycle. So, you yep. know, with the drum of every month. And, you know, first you have SNOP and that was on volume. And now uh, companies are you now um, uh, getting to IBP with financially... Uh, oriented not from volume but in financials but now as i've seen it here you know you already have these financials in your garvis environment and you have it instantly integrated yeah, indeed, the, the, we're still wrapping our brain around this as well. So we're also indeed in our in our drumbeat of our weekly, monthly cycle. So your SNOEs, your SNOPs, where you yeah. get all the, all the information together and at the end of the month you sign it off. But we see now with these new technologies that, yeah, maybe that's outdated. We need to rethink it. So yeah. how are we bringing that all together and how can you valorize indeed all the different uh, components of your volume? Yeah, there's, a, there's a paradigm shift happening. Yeah, so, so you know, SNOP, uh, you know, in IBP, uh, you know, in the in the right way, it has a long term or a mid term uh, horizon, and you have your SNOE on the shorter term. You know, you have your scheduling and you have this kind of sense. But now you have to figure out how to deal with the, the long term, the mid term, and the short term horizon. Yeah, exactly. And I haven't figured it out, Martijn, but if you have a good idea. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm, I'm still digesting what I'm seeing in, uh, with the discussions I have with you and with Pete uh, and with Garvis. Uh, I still have to digest all this. Uh, but basically, this is, you know, uh, you know you, you're talking about democracy of coffee in uh, Jakobsdal Airport, but there's also a kind of democracy happening in your world of planning. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm very passionate about this. Eh? So in, in the long time I've worked in supply chain, um, in all the discussion, all the presentation, people um, always talked about, and because I've always come from the technology side, uh, people are the most important. Eh? People are the most important. Eh? But how do you bridge, um, how do you make it able for people to, um, um, to, to go into processes that are complex and in, in, into technologies that are complex in an easier way. And I think there the, we have our iPhone moment with, uh, maybe iPhone moment, I mean, you know, all of a sudden people like to use technology with um, the fact that their interface becomes their language huh? mm -hmm. and um, that the technologies and the processes around it talk back uh, in their language. And, and that's, we just have to use our imagination 
um, on how that's gonna, gonna, gonna be because basically everybody has now, of course, constraint uh, dependent uh, access to um, all the knowledge that is available, <laughs> that's potential at each moment of a decision. And so that makes a total different world. Yeah. I got a question for the audience. Um, um, can we say that it also makes the integration of demand sensing much easier and more convenient way into the forecast? Tineke. Who? Uh, isn't that say, the same? Yeah. No, well, yeah, yeah, maybe the question is, you know, demand sensing, you know, with sellout data from, 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 uh, from yes. your yes. channels. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah the, the, the thing about AI is that it is difficult to understand the result on what is being calculated. Yeah. So a lot of planners are not data scientists, at least I'm not. Uh, so understanding why a certain volume is, is being calculated. Uh, yeah, now if you have these insights into the drivers and you can ask a question on why uh, does a certain thing come into your volume forecast? Is that indeed a sellout uh, in from the driver? Was it uh, something internal? That can really help you to understand uh, your, your planning figures. Yeah, I, I think it's going to make a huge difference on the psychology. Yeah? Uh, if you um, can know that you can ask why something happened. Eh? If you Before I remember the first generation of the mad sensing, um, you got a number and the number was very correct, but people refused it because they said, okay, 30, you know, what does it mean? Why is it? And yeah. uh, and if you now can just ask, you know, uh, what is this 30? Oh, this 30 is the result of uh, higher orders that we expected and uh, maybe a bit of seasonality. And then at least um, you know, and if seasonality uh, you can ask and then you can start. So if you know the answer is there, the acceptance is going to be a lot, uh, a lot higher, I think, especially if you are answered in a nice way. Yeah, and, and maybe uh, we talk a lot about uh, consensus. So, uh, Pete, maybe you can uh, lead us yeah, through this. So, slide. so yeah. uh, let, let me um, let's say, um, like, uh, I'm a human. Everybody here is human. Eh? So, as humans, we're very, very strong in um, getting insights, getting uh, understanding relations between things, but we also have some weaknesses. Uh, weaknesses are that we sometimes overreact to events that um, we're not so strong with statistical information. Not all of us, um, uh, the man planners most of the time, yes, but people are up, so like being able to explain. And in order to train people to be world class, uh, it, it takes long, um, it's very difficult to find uh, that, that combination. And then you have highly specialized. So I think um, that ChatGPT can, can help create these contexts and challenge some of these biases and um, as well at the high level eh, of management eh, that now are taking decisions that are against the strategic plan as people um, increasing volume where bias, for instance, is um, very clear, you know, but, but they don't realize it yet. Eh? I think yeah. you also have some experience eh, with some of these. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I, I like the picture of the apples with the red one in the middle. I think a lot of the, the, the drivers and when you ask somebody, why does it happen or why is this going to happen is anecdotal. Yeah. But if you really look at the data on you know, what is indeed uh, happening in the past and why will it happen into the future, if you can bring that data into uh, a human, well-interpreted uh, interface to them, can really help you to make better decisions. And maybe uh, in, in this next slide, uh, Tineke, you can explain what is the inter interaction with, between uh, man and machine. Yeah. So yeah, man can only work with a machine if he understands it, So, but yep. to a certain extent. So I can drive my car without understanding the engine. Yeah. So having indeed a, a good understanding of your forecast on why something was being created, but still yeah, something might happen. They uh, yeah, you don't know from, from drivers from the past. So there's always somewhere where uh, the planner needs to interact and needs to uh, yeah, tell uh, that something is going to happen that uh, cannot come from the, from the data itself. But it will help. It will yeah, give you more the, the conscience, the data, the first uh, step on uh, getting to the right level, explaining what, uh, what is happening, uh, and then uh, as a solid base to make a better, uh, make a yeah. better demand plan. I want to even say stronger that that um, the, the the machine cannot solve it. Eh? There, there's a lot of like if you think about um, promotions, for instance, 
uh, a machine can look, okay, what did the promotion do in the past? But you can never know, you know, when exactly the selling is going to happen or when exactly um, what the competition is going to do. Eh? So you need... Uh, yeah, it will make your life easier and say, usually this happens. And then yeah. indeed uh, to make a prognosis out of that. But that uh, still leaves you then, then yeah, the demand planner is still the owner of the of the forecast to still see where uh, we need to course correct in case uh, it's needed. Absolutely. You see it on the, the, the right side with the graph in, in, the, in the simplified uh, form that you have to adjust uh, the forecast. And maybe you can see it here in a better, better way. So Tina, can, can you explain what we are looking at? Yeah, so this is an example indeed of a, of a screen of Garvis where you see on the, the green line is the actual sales and then the purple line is uh, the forecast that, uh, that Garvis created and uh, all the pink areas are the lift on, uh, on promotions that we see. Mm -hmm. So and here we positioned ourselves a bit back in time. So when we were in the past, what would have Garvis have forecasted? And you see that the purple lines overlap very nicely with, uh, with the green lines. So the forecast on, uh, on these peaks, on what the promotions are, uh, are giving us is, is quite nice. So forecasting just out of past to the future yeah, doesn't do a lot for these kind of, uh, of patterns. You really need to make sure that you re really understand when something happens in order to, uh, to make a good forecast for it. Maybe you can have a quick uh, view at uh, well, uh, ChatGPT in Garvis with this graph. So we see all kinds of brands in the coffee being clicked and then uh, and, and the time frame. Yeah, there are two examples here. Eh? The first is um, help me understand what's on the screen eh, for somebody. Yeah. That's the first. So here's is the system explaining. And eh? so what you see eh, is, is a peak in July and it's driven by promotion and it's driven by by um, by seasonality. So it's more like what do I see? Eh? And then yeah. You can you can go into more detail, but um, and then you, you the, the system is now uh, indicating how you can visualize then and control it. But there is another example, uh, Martin. Maybe we can go to the next one. Yeah, where uh, you can ask more strategic questions. You know. Referring to the lockdown and pandemic, yeah. buying behavior. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we see indeed quite some some different behaviors uh, after pandemics uh, with all price changes, uh, shifts between brands, etc. So to get then the insights by asking the question on what you're looking for, instead of uh, being looking for it and clicking through it, yeah, it really help you to get faster insights. Yes, and I can. Have Great, yeah. huh? great. So, uh, Tineke, I can imagine, you know, um, a lot of uh, salespeople hate to, uh, you know, <laughs> give some forecasts, maybe out of uncertainty, or they don't know, or they don't know how to give it. So basically, with this kind of uh, information, they are better equipped to ask the questions and to, uh, you know, to come up with a forecast, I think. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, indeed. So we have now more data on different kinds of granularity of uh, past and future volumes that they can ask indeed uh, you know, questions on what's happening in their customer landscape, in their portfolio, where uh, yeah, they don't need to clear through systems. Usually our uh, sales colleagues don't, uh, don't like that too much mm -hmm. to, to get the information out of it. And another thing is, uh, you know, that's coming to my mind right now is, you know, uh, we all talk about what is the, uh, Effectiveness, uh, effectiveness of uh, marketing campaigns, and now probably you have uh, you know you can ask these questions uh, to uh, to the system with that GPT, and uh, you get more insights. Whereas you know in the past, maybe you don't know if this there's a correlation between uh, marketing effectiveness uh, and campaigns. But yeah. now I think you can have a better conversation about that. Yeah, doesn't mean that you like the answer though that you get. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But and uh, isn't that also, you know, it's about a conversation, you know, with the system, but also between colleagues and then uh, ask better questions and maybe. Could yeah, be and also as a planner, challenge indeed your commercial colleagues on, uh, well, you tell me that this new uh, campaign that you are planning to do next year will uh, give this volume. But in the past, I've been only seen this. So yeah. and if you can sh share that with them yeah, in an overview and in a language uh, that they like. It's uh, much easier than uh, navigating them through uh, through planning tools. 
Yeah, and, and I think, you know, that there's a high acceptance, you know, also for the tool, you know, that, that the company will know that this tool is available for, for more people, whereas in, in the past, you know, only the planners are using a certain tool, whereas now I think uh, that a lot of people would like to as access this tool, just like ChatGPT has been doing, you know, create a lot of buzz and a lot of people are trying it out. I, I can imagine that if, you know, if this is available to all the people involved, that you get, get a better buzz about it. Yeah. And then, yeah, if you really talk about integrated business planning, then you're integrating the business more and more. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, I, I can imagine, Pete, that you are, you know, just developing this, you know, on the fly in the last month, I would say. So I can imagine that, that you're not there yet. You know, there are a lot of other things you can try out. Yes, so, yeah, there, there's no limit to this, eh, basically. But, but the, the um, these are just some examples, but these are real examples. Eh? The, the, um, so the, there are, um, of course, three types of um, questions. Eh? The, the first thing that you can ask is a prompt. Eh? The, instead of using the user interface, I click, 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 and I'm there. You can just say, move me to, um, yeah. for instance, a certain product category of family, or give me all products that, are, um, uh, that have too much bias. Eh? Then secondly, you have the normal reporting capabilities. Eh? Make me a report of this, that. Uh, and then I think the third level, uh, and these are the more interesting one, uh, is, um, of course, you know, strategic. Yeah? Yeah. Um, I have one million. Uh, where should I invest it? <laughs> Something like that, you know, to make sure I make my number, you know, or, oh, my God, will I make my number, you know, or. Um, and then, of course, the, the, the next step is then uh, bringing in data from, uh, from the outside world. Huh? Uh, and um, yeah, am I growing? Am I growing within faster? Um, which, like, for instance, uh, this is not based on coffee, for instance, but, but um, uh, where do you have the same demographies, you know, where um, this type of product works well, you know, and that, that could be could be also questions you know in the future but basically it allows everybody from the organization to look into the future right? yeah so, Atik, i can imagine you know you are rolling out garvis uh, across several countries uh, in europe i can imagine yeah. you know that you will see cultural differences in in the use uh, of coffee and the buying behavior is it this, this uh, kind of uh, tool makes it more easier to to get into that Absolutely. So indeed, all the types of uh, yeah, the master data attributes that we have of, uh, of our products, we can, we can feed into Garvis. And then you can, uh, can chat to the system to ask what comes up. So indeed, you're showing here, for instance, Arabica Robusta, which is important for the, for the French market and not so much for the German market. So yeah. having these kind of differences, so we still have a standardized tool, a standardized way of working, but you can ask your local questions that are locally relevant for you. So how does it impact my baseline in this category or in this customer segment? And you can, uh, it's, uh, it's quite flexible. Before we go to, to the final slide, to wrap up uh, how uh, a new process uh, could look like, uh, you know, I, I was wondering, Tineke, does this kind of ChatGPT tool is helping you for the rollout, you know, for, you know, um, implementing uh, this tool in, in the different countries or is it more like uh, the, the acceptance rate is higher? Yeah, what we're hoping is that it will really help indeed on the explainability of AI. Yeah. So how does this uh, volume being calculated? Where does it uh, uh, result into growth or not growth? Uh, acceptance indeed, not only by the demand planning team, but also by the commercial teams that they can leverage uh, the system. And that's, I think, the big benefit. So maybe, uh, um, uh, Pete, you can explain how a new project uh, could look like in the future. Yes. So, so yeah, in, 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 um, in some, of, of course, what you want to happen is that um, you create visibility. It doesn't mean you have to act on everything yeah, because you're not, but you create visibility as soon as something happened because it's digital, it's visible, and um, it allows um, without latency to have insight in what's um, happening in the world, but you also understand the context. Huh? So um, that, um, that I see as, as the, 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 the opportunity, you understand what the variation is going to be and you understand what the risk is going to be so that you can make um, uh, decisions a lot earlier. 
because it's not just about creating your demand, but it's also about shaping your demand, trying to understand uh, what you can do and influence um, demand, um, but your impact is on your finance and, and the um, other elements. So um, I see a merging of um, long-term, medium-term, short-term. I see um, an, um, where they're feeding on each other. So. Uh, uh, updating them uh, permanently, more understanding so that um, decisions are more focused towards the goal of the organization. And if you have deviation, that um, you have earlier warnings um, that this is happened. Of course, more accuracy yeah, because you have more signals and you're more doing demand detection outside in um, working, uh, which which um, benefits um, uh, the organization. I also, see. Um, a function called more the conversation owner, eh? somebody who um, understands the, um, the different impacts across the different organization and can help people um, understand um, uh, and, and, and manage the system that this is uh, basically understandable eh? for other for all the parties. Yeah. So, you know, the, the most important thing is you see different uh, people production, finance, sales and marketing at the table using uh, open AI in an environment to make sense of it all. And, and, and by doing that you know, on the same integrated system, they get the insights they want, but you can also uh, have discussions among each other. So that, that's, I think, uh, the most uh, uh, important part of, uh, of, of this, this well, paradigm shift, I think. Um, finally, you know, uh, with the supply chain media, I do a lot of analysis of uh, supply chain software. And I see this as a next generation planning. Uh, so we've seen a lot of uh, evolution since, well, yeah, you've been there, Pete, with new metrics and managistics in the late 90s. And, uh, you know, getting into this century, uh, we have uh, new software, SNOP, now also IBP. But why is, what I see when I assess all this kind of software, still a lot of the software nowadays, you know, they're falling short uh, regarding unpredictability and the uncertainty, and we're living in a VUCA world, so we have to deal with it. And another thing is we need to have software able to do scenario analysis, all kind of software, warehouse management, TMS, SNOP, you name it. You have to do scenario analysis. And the final part, you know, and that's getting back to what we have discussed uh, in this hour, you know, we need integrated planning process, but the, the, the chat TPT uh, uh, tool you get access to it. You can see th that it's integrated. That's the the, the, the biggest uh, advantage with uh, inserting JetTPT in this kind of uh, integrated tool like Garvis. And my point is, you know, I think for the next years, uh, software vendors who fail to integrate this kind of chatbot into their system or are not able to make it work because, you know, it's not really integrated system, but, you know, it's separate system and the chatbot can cannot make sense of it. That will be the differentiator, you know, for the companies uh, uh, for the next years and also for the kind of companies who are selecting this kind of tools. Um, do you agree, uh, uh, Tineke, that, you know, this chatbot is, is a qualifier in the next decade if this kind of software is going to work? Absolutely. So the, the tool is only as strong as the people using it. And if yeah. you make it easier for the people to use it by using these, uh, these natural language uh, type question type of, uh, of interface, absolutely. All right, we, we have a few uh, questions left for, for uh, uh, you know, a few minutes left for questions, sorry. Um, so one of the other questions is, you know, um, well, interesting, you know, uh, it's, it's to Pete, uh, the question uh, looks nice. We ask things like, what's the promotion uh, uplift? Is this kind of lookup uh, a pre-calculated forecast component, EA output of a separate model, or is it generated this on the fly? And if the latter, how accurate is it? Yes, so it, 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 it's um, for the moment that we do nightly runs. Eh? So that, that means that um, information is the information from yesterday. But as I explained, we have all the components of demand. So uh, we do have the promotion always separate. So it's, 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 it's fresh and accurate. Um, the goal is in the future uh, to have like um, immediate um, solve. Eh? Um, and then you uh, one of the things that GPT can do is create a prompt. Eh? So that means please um, solve a specific question and then you can do scenarios. And the, 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 the IP is basically the translation of the, the, the outcome and the relation into a textual environment that can be read. Yeah. 
Another question you now, it's about the data and the availability to open AI. So how did you manage to do this, to, to, to uh, yes. integrate this chatbot into Go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so ChatGPT is only one of the different um, chatbots. Yeah? And yeah. Um, so, um, but basically it's a chatbot, it's a large language model and that can read, um, summarize, um, identified um, pieces of, um, of uh, in, in information. And so the thing that we needed to do, and it was actually quite easy to do, was um, translate our uh, digital formats into something that's readable by, um, by that environment. And then there's a lot of tools that are being developed around that, about graphs, about um, reading tables and um, easy mathematics that can, can, um, can combine it. So, so is there a, a connection with open AI of an API kind of stuff? Yeah, yes, there is. Eh? Um, but we, you're, of course, in this environment, you are, really have to watch out that you don't put all your data um, on the on the global. Eh? So it's it's separated now, eh? and um, it's um, uh, how do you say that it's. Um, um, it, it's translated in a way that it can be read, you know, there's a word for it. <laughs> I cannot find on it. It's, it's, um, um, yeah, um, translated so that you, you cannot uh, use it in, in an open environment. Yeah. 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 It, it, it's encryption or something like that. Encryption, exactly. It's encrypted. Yeah. Sorry. All right. Um, you know, um, unfortunately, you know, there are a lot of questions, you know, it, you know, there's a lot of <laughs> chatting about all kinds of stuff we are talking about, you know, um, so in the next 30 minutes, we are available uh, in the lounge. So there will be se several tables available. So, you know, if you want to talk to all the participants or some of the participants, go to a table and uh, you will find it in uh, several languages, uh, natural languages. Uh, you can talk to each other and open up uh, a conversation in a Zoom-like -li uh, environment. So that's uh, available right after this. Um, and and we, will all, we will all be there. Uh, there's more information. Uh, Garvis will be present at our Innovate Supply Chain event uh, on May 11th uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, that was the coolest event uh, in the whole Europe uh, regarding supply chain. And they will be there presenting. Um, and, you know, you can see it and you can, uh, you know, uh, probably uh, see a demo of it. So that that's uh, on uh, the event base on uh, May 11th. You see it on the left. Uh, in the middle is a white paper about uh, bionic demand planning explaining um, the collaboration between um, a man and machine, uh, that's quite of interest. And uh, to the right you now, there, you know, there are still marvelous careers at JDA. So, uh, ChatGPT and Garvis won't obliterate, obliterate all, uh, the, the demand planning functions, uh, in the, in the supply chain. So, uh, there's a lot to do still, uh, within JDA in supply chain planning. Um, with this, I'd like to thank you, uh, Pete for, for your conversation. Uh, so thank you for uh, having uh, this kind of uh, great insight. Uh, I see a lot of uh, applause. Oh, nice. <laughs> and uh, and Tineke, uh, thank you for being so open. You know, I, I think it, it's quite a, a journey you are going through in this month. And uh, implementing SNOP is, is a challenge. But, but with a rather new kind of uh, revolutionary tool like Garvey, it's an extra uh, uh thing to 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 uh to experience thank you for uh, the, your openness and uh, to explain all this thank you very much all right and the audience you know uh well like i said over 1200 people have registered and uh, i think uh, over uh, uh 600 people uh, have been live uh at this uh, uh webinar uh and next uh, we'll have some uh, almost 30 minutes to uh, to discuss this even further there are a lot of questions and yes this is it will be recorded and the the, the slides will be made available and there will be a lot of uh, uh, talks about it. And I hope to see you next uh, in another uh, webinar or in the lounge right after this. And uh, maybe I will see you in the Netherlands on the, uh, in our, at our Innovate event uh, on May 11th. Thanks for now and bye-bye.